Hey guys, Nick here with Taco Jeep Adventures. Going to be going over pretty exciting uh, reviews slash, I'm gonna tell you how I install it. It's mostly gonna be a review. Uh, the garage winch system, which I've got everything laid out here on the whiteboard I'm gonna be going over. You can see my tent above me here. And hopefully, I think in the corner of the GoPro maybe picking it up, but I'm gonna go over the uh, Harbor Freight 1500 pound Badlands winch that I used to um, complete this project. So. Yeah, I'm gonna be going over project needs, everything you're gonna to need to do this, um, why I did this, right, and in depth considerations. I've changed this setup up three times. Um, so lots of learnings there, and that's why I've kind of waited to put this out, um, or, or really create the video, um, because I've been kind of learning as I've gone. Um, and I had put out a few leaks on, on Instagram uh, that I had been starting this, Gosh, probably a couple months or so ago. So anyways, I want to share everything that I've learned in hopes that that will help you guys um, determine which route is best for you. Definitely going to be going over pros, cons, difficulty of, of, of doing this, cost. So kind of the what I found with what I did and then a couple areas you can cut costs if you want to do something a little more budget friendly. Um, some things around safety I've got a note on, of course, references on the products used and all that will be included. So with that, let's jump right in. All right. So here's how I've organized everything to kind of walk you through these guys, hopefully, um, in an efficient manner. Project needs in no particular order. Just want you guys to capture this, pause your screen, take note very quickly. Again, in no particular order. Uh, saw obviously to cut the wood right drill and drill bits. So you're gonna want to pre-drill um, Your holes stud finder important. You don't want this thing coming down impact sockets Screws I ended up running. I think four and a quarter inch um, Eye screws which are ultimately gonna be what this hooks into which will go over lag bolts tape measure of course um, rope or cable depending on what you would like to utilize for uh, your job. I believe rope is cheaper, um, which I'll go over. I got it at Home Depot and you can buy it by the foot. This one was 370 pound rated uh, 3 8 rope um, ratchet straps. I'm going to go over the ones that I used um, and then refer you to the more budget friendly option should you want to go that route. Pulleys, of course, links in the description. They're 420 pound um, pulleys each, right? Capable. Uh, the winch itself, again, link in description from Harbor Freights, the Badlands 1500, 120 volt AC winch, um, rope clamp, so to kind of tie up the loose ends and clean it up, I'll show you that. Quick links, um, of course a helping hand, and then definitely patience. Alright guys, so why get a winch system? Why did I do this? I gotta stop clapping too, my wife hollers at me. Stop doing that, she edits all the videos. Sorry honey, uh, I'll work on that. Why did I get this, guys? Um, I, as you know, if, if you've got a similar build or you're lugging around a lot of gear, that weight adds up. Not only does it impact your MPGs, but now you've got to consider how your vehicle is going to perform in the given scenarios you may be utilizing your vehicle for. I do everything from pick up my little one from school to lead off-roading group rides and various terrains, right? So. Having all that extra weight definitely affects how the vehicle performs and really, uh, you know, kind of the, the primary thing is that it really starts in impacting your suspension rating. So on my truck, I have the Deaver Stage 2 Leaf Pack, which is really the sweet spot is kind of 400 to 600 pounds, right? Um, and that's pretty much I'm right in the middle of it right now with no gear in or on the truck. Um, so when I put the tent on the truck, obviously that leaf, the leaf pack gets flat. Um, and you can tell the ride quality goes down significantly. It's not made to, that leaf pack is not made to have that type of weight. So I was kind of faced with, because the truck has just evolved, right? And, and, and so what happened is I just got faced with like, what do I want to do? Like I can't lug this tin around with my current setup. Do I A, get a deeper stage three? And now I'm, I have to kind of leave the weight on the truck 24 seven because if I take the tin off then it's going to be oversprung, right? Um, and I really don't want to lug the tent around 24 seven because it's 200 pounds. And I definitely noticed a couple MPG, um, you know, improvement taking the tent off. Uh, furthermore, the truck just wheels way better, right? So 
I like to do technical stuff. I like to push the truck, push myself, and having that 200 pounds kind of not super high, like you know, some people have them like calf height, but still having 200 pounds up there when you're getting really tilty and swaying through stuff, I mean, you feel it, and um, and and it's it's just way better without. So I've been going back and forth personally on what camping looks like for me and my family ongoing we've got ground tents so we're kind of back to that at this point been thinking about getting a trailer to pull behind which uh, maybe a topic for a whole nother thing but those are some things to consider as to why you would get a winch system um, this is definitely an efficient way to take things on and off which i will demonstrate at the end of the video so those are some high level reasons why i got it um definitely like i said you know prior to ha trying to get a second pair of arms that can help me lift this thing off and then you've got to store it somewhere and obviously you're not lifting it up to the ceiling right having it up there out of the way where both of our off-road vehicles can still pull in the garage has been a game changer um so yeah that's why i got it and that's what i feel some of the benefits are jumping into considerations you definitely want to consider your storage space right and height and clearance is huge so I went through a few different setups, which I'll go down here, and that can impact, right, whether your vehicle can can get into place, um, whether taller people can walk under, etc. So you want to consider your storage space, your height, and your clearance when you're mapping out all the products, which I'm going to go over what that ends up netting you um, for clearance from your ceiling. Um, interference, things that you would want to consider, right, like I really looked at this, which if I put you up here really quick, you can see how close it is to my garage motor, right? So you're gonna to wanna to consider things like your garage motor. Um, light, lighting, right? So I, I, I put it where it's at for multiple reasons, but in consideration of blocking a lot of this nice lighting that I put up in my garage, I didn't wanna, I wanted to maximize my lighting as well. Um, you know, your garage door, things of that nature, you wanna consider, you wanna consider the space you're working with, um, definitely, the, the pulley rope angle, which I'm looking at here, you, you really don't want your winch being, you know, driving out way to the side like this, right? So I wanted to consider where I mounted the winch so that my, my pulley angle wasn't too significant. And I'll, I'll go over that as you can see here in a moment with all the, the pulleys and whatnot. Electrical access. So this, I mean, they give you a really long cord uh, with the winch, but this is 120 uh, volt AC winch right so i just plug it right in the wall and it, and it operates like that so you definitely want to consider electrical access your hardware and weight capabilities i mean as you'll see i'll demonstrate here in a moment everything that i got is like it's pretty overkill right like one pulley is can support 420 pounds and i can tell you i mean the winch is 1500 pounds it's a 200 pound tent um but it's kind of basic stuff so you know you, i think you definitely want to make sure that you're hitting those studs when you're getting the primary boards up there. That's probably the, the biggest component. But a lot of the stuff which I'm going to refer you to or that you will find out there should you shop around yourself is plenty capable of, of hoisting 200 pounds. Um, ease of operation. Again, you know, I just back my truck in, right? And then I can, it's kind of not quite center in my two car uh, bay garage, but back the truck in. I can lower the tent, you know, kind of get out and maybe even have a second pair of eyes of my wife's around or whatever, and just pretty much lower it on the bed. And then I can make the adjustments, lift it to get my mounting hardware in place and go. And then the reverse, back it in, undo my hardware, hook up my straps and just hoist it off the truck. Um, so ease of operation, it's, it, it, it's something you want to consider based on how you need to put something on or off of your vehicle or take gear, whatever. Um, it worked out really well in my case. Learning, so simplifying the project. Yeah, different setup. So when we started, I kind of did a turnbuckle setup, right? So it was a little overkill in that we were using turnbuckles um, and, and way more quick links in this project. It was very, very expensive, number one. Number two, I needed, I didn't need, but I wanted more height, more clearance for like, for example, I got a buddy at 6'4", when he walked in here, you know, he had to kind of duck under the thing. Um, and so you really need to consider your vehicle height, the height of your roof, what are your future goals, right? If you're maybe just getting into this 
you know, and, and maybe in a year you're like, oh, I want to do a bigger lift and bigger tires, you know, and put cases on my roof, you know, the, at roof rack. There's a lot of things you want to consider downstream of what you're doing. So, yeah, consider that, right? Um, so I got rid, oh, and, and underneath versus the straps, which I'm using now, I had wood boards that I was lifting the truck on and, you know, or lifting the tent on and off of my truck with, right? So it was kind of challenging to feed the boards under. I had eye bolts running through the boards. Um, so I, I deleted all that and just really simplified the project with the straps, which also reduced costs, right? The more, the more hardware you use, this will very, very quickly spiral into an expensive project. And I, I wanted to be efficient and keep costs down, which I would assume many of you would appreciate and want to do as well. So yeah, wrapping up on that, just know that your design will translate to the clearance um, and efficiency, right? Especially if, if you don't have a second pair of hands and you're doing this by yourself. So I think we've really maximized on that in this project. Um, next, pros and cons. Um, I mean, really the only con that I've found thus far is you've got a big 200 pound object you know, above your vehicle that's blocking some of your lighting. I mean, for me, that's been the only con I can really think of. Um, pros are that I don't have to lug a 200 pound tent around. I can efficiently lift it on and off the vehicle. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been great, you know, and I could technically use this winch for other things down the road. Um, so yeah, I. I Basic pros, it's just really helped out with my, my situation. Um, difficulty, this was not very hard. I did have a second set of hands helping me. Shout out to my buddy Jake. Um, he had kind of pioneered this on his own and did a different design, which is what we had originally went with. But him and I continue to put our heads together, continue to evolve this project into what it is today. And I'm really, really happy with, with the outcome. Um, so definitely wasn't too difficult, or difficult, and I will show you, um, again, design and how we made it and so forth. Costs, let me get my sheet here. We're going to go over a breakdown. So cost, let's see, I wanted to break this down for you guys very quickly. You'll have to look up, this is as of uh, March 28th, 23, right? So costs may change with materials future state from now. Um, but an eight foot two by six is roughly ten dollars and change each. So it was a little over twenty one bucks for two of those. Um, the two by twelve, which is what the winch is mounted on, I got a four foot section that was I want to say like eleven bucks close to it. Um, the Harbor Freight winch, <clears throat> excuse me, was one hundred seventy four ninety nine. They ended up having some sort of a special that day. I mean, we have an account, right? So you you give them your info, you can get your little card or whatever, have an account. It was 20% off, so we ended up spending $140 <clears throat> on the winch. Again, the rope is 3 8 um, um, You can get 100 feet is what I ended up using. I mean, I had a little left over, but that covered the job. Um, it's the nylon twist. That was 35 bucks. so do the math on that per foot, but you can buy it by the foot. Just make sure for your job that may be different plus or minus what you need measure that out um screws i mean i had i had a box i don't know right what what screws are going for right now for like four and a quarter but i had some left over right so i ended up using looks like 24 of those eye screws i've got seven sixteenths um by five and a quarter those are about a dollar 99 each there's four of them so it's about eight bucks for those right I got a large quick link that's half inch. I'll show you here in a moment, which is kind of what the winch is hooked up to. And that's where the main rope lead goes through. And then I've also got smaller three eighths quick links, um, which you may or may not need. And I'll show you why I used them. Those are 459 each for the three eighths. And then I don't think I said it, the large quick link, the half inch was 799. I used one of those, so eight bucks. Rope clamps, I'll show you, it just, it cleans it up. You may not want those. I just wanted to clean up the ends. I'll show you. It was $3.59 a pair at Ace. I got two pair for $7 and change. Um, regular ratchet straps. So this is if you want to go the budget friendly option, you can get from Harbor Freight. I looked it up. Um, for a pair, right? Um, 
It's $12 to $24, depending if you want their 700 pound rated or their 1,000 pounds, again, overkill. Um, yeah, so that's the budget friendly option. I went with Diamondback ratchet straps, which I'll show you. They support a little bit more weight than that, even, even beyond the 1,000. I think it's like 1,600 and change on their website. It was $59 a pair, right? And I went with two. And I think that may be overkill because according to Harbor Freight, this particular winch has a built-in brake. They refer to it on their website as uh, brake type automatic load holding, right? So the safeties I put in place, which is what I've got down here on the bottom, I mean, this thing, for whatever reason, right? It's sitting, it's sitting above two very expensive automobiles. And furthermore, my child's walking under this thing, right? So to me, to have the extra safety, even though the winch has an automatic brake in it, I decided to go that route. You may not have the same scenario, right? Um, so yeah, that's why I did that. So uh, lag screw bolts, right? Um, that's what I use to mount all of the pulleys. There's eight pulleys in total, um, which I don't think I stated. And that was $4.75 each for each pulley. I've got those on Amazon, so it was roughly 30 bucks. Again, link in description for that. So you'll have to source around, see where parts are cheaper. I found some things surprisingly were cheaper at Ace, which is rare. Um, some things were cheaper on Amazon, and you'll definitely have to determine where you get your rope or cable from and your straps if you go with this style. Or, you know, get creative if you can think of a better design. By all means, um, hopefully this helps you along. So non-budget, right? So the route I went, um, I've got a range here, and this is, I'm just throwing estimates because I'm trying to consider taxes and I'm trying to consider some variances depending on plus or minus what you go with. You're looking at 420 to $450 in an investment for, for everything. Um, if you go the budget friendly route, as I was mentioning, you can choose regular ratchet straps from Harbor Freight, something along those lines. You can kind of cut costs here and there um maybe even the, some of the win, uh, pulleys you might be able to get cheaper right like 420 pounds per is overkill but at 475 each i wasn't too concerned personally but budget again all things considered some variances taxes you're looking at 300 to 320 bucks roughly um to do that um i'm going to jump back to considerations real quick because i did make a few notes here after drawing all this out on the whiteboard and i want to make sure that i touch on these um you're gonna to need to find where your, your studs are on center, right? So mine were 24 inch on center, FYI, stud finder. Um, what I ran into is my stud finder was yelling at me because a lot of this electrical that I have out here was um, causing it to, um, I guess malfunction, we'll say. Um, so I actually used like a drill bit and I was pushing because I, I could kind of tell where it was, you know, 24 on center, but it's not perfect. So I would, I would literally push on either side of that until it went through so that I knew exactly where that stud was because I want no chances of this coming down on anyone or my vehicle. So FYI on that, pulleys. I'm gonna show you here in a moment. We're gonna pull this down um, to get to the center bolt, or excuse me, to get to the center hole from, from mounting of the pulleys, you're going to need to take them apart. And it's super, super simple. There's a little pin, um, basically a safety pin that I'll show you, you pull it out. The whole center um, wheel comes out of the pulley and then you have access to be able to pre-drill, you know, mark, pre-drill, um, and then ultimately bolt it and put it back together. I think we've covered it. That's all the notes. Um, yeah, so next, let's jump right in. I'm going to go over um, just kind of step by step how we we made this come to life, right? Starting with, with the wood. So I have not given you a close-up just yet. I'm going to do that real quick before showing you how this came to life so you can kind of see how the... And, and I may paint and beautify this future state, right? If you want to do that while you're doing the job, it's probably a good time to do it. But that's how I have the winch mounted. Um, this is the 2x12. And, you know, obviously, I again, kind of going over the winch line angle you can see here is not super aggressive. And you'll see how the pulleys are set up. But then again, I've got, I can just plug this in right here, right? Operate the winch. I may hang that up there, future state, to make it look a little neater. You can see how every corner here has this eye screw. This X pattern of the straps are really the safeties, right? So I'm going corner to corner 
and basically what I've done is I've pulled the winch up to a certain point and then I've ratcheted these straps um, to kind of take a little bit of that pressure off of the winch. Again, maybe overkill. It's got a built-in brake. You make the determination for yourself on that. The ones that are running um, across this way here on, on, on the front and rear, you can see are, are where the, the rope is attached, right? Um, and, and there's the rope clamps as I was describing beyond the knot that I had made there and just kind of cut off and burn the end. So it's kind of, it's got a, a clean end. It's not going to pull up and the rope's going to be dangling and potentially get into the pulley or none of that. Um, this, you can see here, I've got the quick links. These are the three eighths. I've got two of them. The reason why I did that is I wanted this ratcheting portion to be under the tent. I didn't want to be ratcheting against the side of the, the aluminum. Um, I probably, and again, changed the design multiple times, probably could have had the board out further and the eye screw out further. But I really wanted, I mean, thinking through it, really wanted this to be more straight up and not out. Um, and that's just where it ended up, right? So I've got the ratchets underneath. This is how they're set up. And so I just used a couple quick links to help kind of extend, um, extend the, the ratchet here, uh, the strap. So that's that. Again, X safety. These two going across front and rear, that's what lowers and, and raises this tent up through the pulley system. Now, let me get my step ladder so you can kind of see. One thing that I did not mention is this. I had this laying around, these little brackets, right? So that's what I, that's what I basically clamped this together with this hardware and locking nuts. Um, so this is all of the main lines, right? Going through this half inch quick link, which is definitely overkill. Um, and ultimately, right, going to the, the winch, but made the, made the knot, cut the ends, zip tied it there just to kind of keep it clean. Um, burned all the ends of the rope, obviously. So that's not going anywhere. That rope's gonna have to go through here and that's not gonna happen. Um, so that's how that's set up. I'm gonna go ahead and Loosen these, take them off so that we can demonstrate. I'm gonna get the truck out of here so that we can demonstrate this going up and down, what that looks like. And then I'm gonna show you all the pulleys and how I've got everything running here so you have a clearer picture. So here quickly, I've undone the ratchet straps, right? That were going in the X pattern that operated in a safety. And what I did is I just, I just bumped the winch up to get off of the safeties so that I can undo them, right? And I'm just leaving them hanging for the time being for demonstration purposes, but way easier to do this on and off if you're gonna do a safety versus turnbuckles, right? Whereas, you know, before I'd be pulling them up with turnbuckles going from the, the top to the bottom eye bolt, right? Similar to the eye screw, it's just the bolt that went through the wood boards. And then I'd bring them up and then essentially use the eye screw and the eye bolt that was in the existing boards with another turnbuckle to lower as a safety, right? So that it took the, the weight off the winch. And um, I mean, if you're, if you're doing that by yourself and you're trying to put a turnbuckle in all four corners, you know, if you don't have that tent perfectly level, you know, you gotta make sure they're all in place before you lower that tent on there. It could be a little off, right? So this is just way easier. So there's that. Now I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna come on down. I may have to move my step ladder, but basically you start lowering it. Definitely gonna need to move the ladder here. <laughs> so, but what we can do, now this is down, obviously you guys can see how that operation works. If I come up here, you can see where the winch connects to the main lead. And what I have is I've got four pulleys and you're gonna have to consider all your angles and how each pulley feeds to the next pulley. But you can see the corners here in the front, I've got um, this way, right? I've got oriented this way. Those are feeding to these, which are mounted differently, right? You can see, and there's that pin I was talking about when you need to take them apart. You can see how these are oriented because the pulley operation needs to um, pick the tent up, right? And then lower it down. So these are oriented this way. The pulleys have the capability to be mounted. You can see there's, well, the rope's blocking that one. There's three holes that allow you to mount it like that, right? So I've got two of those butted together, routing back to this main lead, right? So that's all, going through these and down ultimately to the tent. Now these two, you can see here, are mounted slightly differently. 
they're going back to these corners, which are not mounted like the front ones, which are flat aiming inward because they have to go inward towards the center pulleys. These are aimed this way, right? That one's at a slight angle because of, of where the, the four center pulleys, we'll call it, that all this is rattling through is. So just consider that in your orientation, again, you're gonna need two, four, six, eight in total, as mentioned, and you're just gonna to wanna to consider based on how your winch is and how that main line comes through your operation, what that's gonna look like, but it could potentially look something very similar to this, and it has worked seamlessly. There's no, you know, the ropes aren't getting bound up anywhere. It's, it's flowing very efficiently. Um, this is how I did it. So basically, let me rewind, start to finish. I got the boards, I'd gone over the measurements with you guys. Um, these are the two by sixes, and basically I found out with my plans that I'm 24 on center, use the stud finder again, poke the holes with the drill bits on either side to really find out where that was. And I wanted three, three points, right? So I've got two screws there on that end, two here, center, and then two here, right? So there's six in that board. On this one, I cut a smaller one out of the extra piece. I'd have to get the tape to measure. I think these were roughly 60 inches, 58 inches, something like that. This one's almost half that. As you can see, I left a little on each end um, to be able to hit 24 on center. There's two screws there and two here, right? And then I utilized the front board, um, the main one, to put two pulleys, and then this one as kind of a secondary spot to put two pulleys, right? And then same as the front main board there, here's the, the main rear, 24 on center, I did two there, two there, two there. So there are six screws, probably overkill, but um, helps me sleep at night that this is gonna stay in place. And again, I think that's 58 inches roughly. So I, I cut the boards, pre-drilled everything after finding the studs, ran four and a quarter inch screws through, six on that, six on that, um, four on that one. After that, pre-drilled the holes for the eye screws um, and then threaded those, right? You can use a pipe or a bar to help you rotate that because it, it, it's pretty tight, but you want to get a good bite on those. So I screw at each corner and then pretty much, again, pulled this pin out, right? And then you've got this like dowel here that'll come out um, and you'll be able to pull the, the mechanism for the pulley completely out and have access there through the center to get to those three holes in the back. Hopefully that is picking it up for you. Um, yeah, so that's it. Now, as far as, as, far as mounting it this way, you've, you're gonna have access to the two corners and this one. So it's really just mounting it um, in this orientation. So once we got those mounted, um, it was time to route the rope. So we ran all the rope loosely, right? I used a kettlebell to kind of um, add some weight to the, to the setup. Um, but you can, you know, figure out a way to, to put some weight on it. Um, ultimately what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure that it is all even when it routes back, back to this, because at the end of the day, and that's a nice thing about the ratchet straps, I was fighting myself to get this tent level or close to level, right? Cause if you can imagine, um, if you, if you don't have this rope exact, it is not going to be anywhere close to level. So I was fighting that over and over, having to redo this knot. Nice thing about the ratchet straps, if it's not perfectly level, you just, you know, ratchet one of your straps to kind of make for that, that fine adjustment that you need to get it that way. Um, so yeah, once you get all your rope ran, um, look up. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not a knot professional, um, but look up, you know, a knot that you may feel is feasible for you. This is the design of the knot that I'm running here, which hopefully this is picking up well for you. And then I ran rope clamps, right? So that's not going anywhere. This is really, really tough stuff. Again, I think the rating was close to 400 pounds on this. Um, and anytime you run something back through a pulley, it, it doubles in strength, essentially, as I understand it. So like, again, overkill. I've hung on this with someone else my size hanging on that side and this whole thing operates fine right so that's like three times um the weight of this right so yeah that's how we ran ran the ropes the knots the clamps um cut the ends burn those off and then got the um ratchets kind of adjusted how we wanted them and that's it i mean it really was not that bad it was the longest part of all of this was literally figuring it out um and then obviously pulling the vehicle and it's like, oh, that's, that's, you know, I don't have as much room as I thought. What if I want to put a case there? What if, 
what if we want to go up in tire size someday or whatever, right? So then I just kept thinking, how can we, you know, take stuff back, get some money back because it was really, really expensive. And then I was like, you know what? I got these freaking Diamondback straps over here, um, new in the box, right? And that's how this was born. So hope that helps. I'm going to show you here. Um, so imagine the truck's there, right? I had put it on the truck and then I'm, I'm coming back into the garage after a camp trip. Essentially, I'm going to get the strap, right? And I'm going to back the truck in. I'm going to feed this strap under it. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a little loose, right? I'm going to feed it under this side of the tent, feed this one near the cab under this side of the tent, undo all my mounting hardware. And once we're all good, you're going to hit this, right? I'm just going to start hoisting that up. And that is it. That's the operation. And now I didn't do that just for demonstration purposes. What I'm probably going to do is put it back down and then get on the ladder. You really want to make sure your winch line is feeding um, evenly across here, right? So I'll usually get a glove and I'll lean into that winch cable or pull, depending on which way the line's going, and um, apply a, actually a pretty significant amount of pressure to get that line to, to roll evenly in there. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Let me set you guys up over here. Um, obviously, real quick, again, jumping around here a little bit. Shout out to Diamondback. I've got their tonneau cover on my truck. I've had two of them, and uh, I just like their products. And these are really, really, really strong straps that um, I've utilized to strap things down to the cleats on their Diamondback cover on my truck. Um, so I will put in the description a link to their website. You can find this as an accessory on their website. And then if you are interested in this winch, you'll probably, if you Google Harbor Freight, have one near you, or you can look up harborfreight.com. Again, it's the 1500 pound, 120 volt AC winch. Here is my Instagram. I do various installs, reviews, reels, all the fun jazz. If you want to look that up, we also are, we have started our Taco Jeep Adventures Instagram page as well. So yeah, guys, final thoughts. This has helped me a lot. Again, I'm kind of in a weird spot where I'm trying to figure out if an Overland trailer makes sense. It's a huge investment, or I could build one, which is a lot of time and investment. So yeah, just trying to figure all that out. But hopefully for your given scenario, this was a helpful overview. This will help you feel confident in tackling a project like this because it's really not that complicated. Um, and, and hopefully that helped you figure out what those costs look like and, and so forth so you can make the best decisions for you. So if this was helpful to you, you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, give a little love there, uh, share if you've got any questions or comments. I'm happy to answer questions that maybe I missed. Comments if, if there's something I missed that you feel would be helpful. Uh, to individuals who are coming to view a uh, video like this, please um, drop them below. GoPro is getting hot. All right, guys, as I was saying, thank you so much. And until next time, take care.